Complexity analysis or the use of asymptotic notation to describe the efficiency of algorithms is just a fancy way of realizing the goodness or the badness of an algorithm as per the resources those algorithms consume when applied on by some particular size of input. What resources do these algorithms consume you ask? Well the obvious being time and the less obvious being space. Yes, memory space. Why input size you ask? Because the chosen algorithm might perform extremely well for a small sized input but might just be terrible for a larger input and that is pretty bad. Let's take an example of the linear search. It basically is the process of finding a particular required element in a whole list of elements by going through the list one by one and checking whether the element is present in that list or not. This might seem like a good idea when you have like 10 elements in the list but what if you have like a hundred million elements to search through? The computer has feelings too, right? So how do you compare algorithms? Well, one method is to write the algorithm down in a specific programming language like C, then compile it on a specific compiler like GCC, and then use a specific timer to check the running time of the algorithm. Do the same for all the other algorithms you want to compare, and pray to God your computer doesn't crash and burn. Do I really need to explain why this is a pretty bad idea? So we have asymptotic notations like big O, big omega and big theta as they specify a universal scale for measuring algorithms. And that my dear friends is amazing. But to implement some of these concepts we have to make a few assumptions. One being that all elementary steps in the algorithms like addition, multiplication, division, subtraction take constant time. What is constant time? Well it just means that to do all the included steps the resources required are independent of the input size given to the algorithm. Not that in the real case scenario they don't matter, trust me they do, but while applying such algorithmic analysis steps they are not as influenced by the input or its size for that matter. Even accessing an element in an array is consider to take constant time. If you know a bit about actual computer architecture, you might know that the time to access a given variable or array element is not necessarily fixed, for it could depend on whether the variable or array element is in the cache, in the main memory or out on disk in a virtual memory system. Some sophisticated models of computers take these issues into account, but it's often good enough to just assume that all variables and array entries are in the same memory and they all take the same amount of time to access, hence constant time. The main thing you need to remember and understand is that algorithmic analysis depends on the growth of the size of input. I cannot stress that enough. Now what would the complexity of the linear search be? As I said earlier, it's basically the process of finding a particular required element in a whole list of elements by going through the list one by one and checking whether the element is present in that list or not. In this case, we have the number of elements or our input size as n. Then it will take us about n amount of iterations to get the job done, assuming that is the average case. So this kind of algorithm has a big O of n complexity where the big O is just a notation to indicate that in an average implementation of this algorithm, it will take n iterations to find the answer. But big O also specifies something else. It also enlightens us about the fact that it will never take more than n iterations to find the answer. Which brings us to the concept of bounds. The big O denotes the upper bound beyond which the consumed resources of the algorithm won't ever be exceeded. That's how you should think about the notations in terms of resources and not in terms of time. So what if you find the element by linear search in the list at the first position. Should there not be a way to account for that in the algorithmic analysis? There is and that is none other than big omega. Big omega specifies the lower bound and is in stark contrast to what the big o measures. Big omega is used to measure the lowest amount of resources used while running the algorithm which in this case is big omega of 1 which is basically constant time and that occurs when the element is present in the first element of the list and it's constant time because it doesn't really need to worry about the size of the entire input because it is at the first position. It also has a say in the fact that these are the lowest amount of resources which can possibly be used to run this algorithm and it is not feasible to run it without them. So that is what lower bound means. 
So now you might be wondering, so if big O measures the upper bound and big omega measures the lower bound, what in the world would the big theta measure? Big theta is just a mashup of both of them and uses big O to correspond to big theta of the upper bound and big omega to correspond to the big theta of the lower bound. That is absolutely it. So to make the concept more concrete, let us consider an example. Suppose you have an algorithm which runs a function of the input size as t of n is equal to 11 n squared plus 22 n plus 13. n here is the input size and the units of t of n can be whatever you want. Example, seconds or microseconds, it really doesn't matter, they are just consumable resources and that's how you should think about them. Now as n grows, the term 12 and 22n become less and less significant. Imagine that n is 500, so well, n squared will be 500 squared, which if you ask me is a pretty large number as compared to 500. So you can now say that t of n is approximately equal to 11n squared, which has 11 and that is just a constant. So we can see again that t of n is equal to c1 times n squared, where c1 is a constant. As you can see the graph for a value of c3 greater than c1, tn never exceeds the value of f2 of n, in the horizontal direction, to the right I mean, which means that t of n is bounded by f2 of n and more so this is an upper bound. And as we saw earlier an upper bound means using the big O notation. So the notation will be big O of C3 times N square but in most cases as C3 is just a constant it doesn't really reflect upon the input size so we truncate it. Yes the constant is considered in the real world timing analysis but we get the final big O notation as big O of N square or O of N square. Similarly we can consider the lower bound with a value of C2 which is less than C1 by using the same assumptions and calculation we did earlier. We can say that after seeing the graph that t of n does not exceed the graph of the new function in the left horizontal direction and can be coined as being the lower bound. So this kind of a bound is labeled by the big omega notation and in this case it is big omega c2 times n square after omitting the constant big omega of n square. And now you must um, be thinking that if it is obviously graphed big theta is basically between those two bounds and by that you are probably correct and so by now you must be thinking of how you might get a better understanding of algorithms and to that I would recommend or basically algorithmic analysis and to that I will tell you to read Algorithms Unlocked by Thomas Corman and just follow the bibliography for uh, more references. This is all in this video but if you want me to make such videos uh, let me know by posting a suggestion in the comment section below. Like, share and subscribe and thanks for watching. Later guys.